In this video, we're going to make some magnesium carbonate in hopes of using it in the future as part of the mix that will make some colored smoke bombs. Some information, why don't we? It occurs in nature. It's called magnesite. It was first made in 1701 by M. B. Valentine, but later on it was found that that was contaminated with lime when they could test for it better. The first pure magnesium carbonate was made in 1877 by Kiyo Zaburo Tomita, and he was from Japan. Currently, China produces 70% of the world's supply of magnesium carbonate. Magnesium carbonate is known to be a good laxative. It's quite hygroscopic, so it's also used as climbing chalk as it absorbs the water, leaving the salts behind, which actually work good for friction. And as I stated earlier, it can be used as a low temperature burning mix in the making of colored smoke bombs. And this is key, keeping the temperature low enough so that the dyes that you use don't just burn up. The materials we need are magnesium sulfate, MgSO4, and sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, and of course some water to dissolve both of these. So the reactions here, I'm going to start with the sodium carbonate because I'll be using what I made myself, and that is 2 NaHCO3 with heat yields sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. So to do this, you take regular baking soda, put it in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius for one hour, and at that point you burn off these and you end up with sodium carbonate. In the reaction we're going to be doing today, we take that sodium carbonate, mix it with magnesium sulfate, giving us sodium sulfate and magnesium carbonate, which is what we want. This is a double displacement reaction because we're swapping both ions in this equation to the two other ions in the products. The ionic equation for this particular reaction is magnesium plus 2 plus CO3 minus 2, both aqueous, yields magnesium carbonate solid. The spectator equation are the sodium and the sulfate ions because they remain aqueous the entire time. And one last note, magnesium sulfate, the stuff you buy in the store, comes with seven waters. So it's actually magnesium sulfate heptahydrate, and that's important when you work out the equations we're going to go into next. You have to include those seven waters. Next, we're going to do a little math here. If we look at the original equation here, it is somewhat simplified because the waters are not included here, but they will be included later. But the important thing is to note that there's one mole, one mole, one mole, and one mole. In comparison to up here where we have two moles of the uh, sodium bicarb, which becomes one mole of sodium carb. So one, 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 and that simplifies this quite a bit. So from the periodic table, we can find out each element that's involved in this reaction and what their atomic weights are, and I listed them here. So sodium, 22.99 grams per mole, carbon, 12, oxygen, 15.99, which I'll round up to 16, magnesium, 24.3, sulfur, 32, and hydrogen, 1. And again, you can find these easily on any periodic table. So the molecular mass is the combination of all the different elements inside of the uh, molecule that make this up. So sodium, 1, carbon, 1, oxygen, 3. So if we take these numbers over here and we plug them in, 15.99 times 3, uh, accounting for the three oxygens right there, which are right here, we end up with 105.95 grams per mole. When we do it with magnesium sulfate all by itself, we end up with 120.3 grams per mole. But down here, and that's why I have this asterisk here to remind me, we have magnesium sulfate with the seven waters included. So I took the 120.3 from here, and then I added up the waters, which was 15.99 for one oxygen, and one for a hydrogen, but there's two of them in water, and you add this together, multiply it by seven, and you add that to the 120.3, and you end up with 246.23 grams per mole. So that's quite a bit higher than the 120.3 we had before, and why when you plug this into an equation, it needs to be accurate. So let's go back to the sodium carbonate here. I want to end up with 40 grams of magnesium carbonate. That's my end goal. So we go back and we work this equation right here. We have X grams of sodium carbonate times one mole over its molecular weight. This will give us how many moles of the sodium carbonate we'll need in grams. Then we time that by one over one, which is the ratio. We already found out one mole, one mole, one mole, one mole. So this is simple. It's just one, which we could delete, but I just wanted to explain it. And then we multiply by the molecular weight of the magnesium carbonate over one mole. And that, of course, needs to equal 40 grams of magnesium carbonate. Next to uh, solve this equation, we need to take the top of the fractions here and the bottom of the fractions and multiply them across. So we have on the top, X grams, that gets dropped out, that's 1, 1, 84.3 grams equals 40. And then on the bottom, we have 105.95 times 1 times 1, and this is 40 over 1, so that's times 1 also. And if we do that, we end up with X 
times 84.3, all the top, over 105.95, all of the bottom, equals 40. So next, we multiply each side by 105.95. That gets rid of this 105.95. And of course, the 40 on the other side has to be multiplied by it also. So the next thing we have is x times 84.3, which was on the top here only, equals 40 times the 105.95 we just did. Next, we have x equals 40 over 105.95 over 84.3, because we divided both sides by 84.3, so we can cancel this out. And if you solve this right here, you'll end up with 50.27 grams of sodium carbonate. So that's what we need to start with in order to get our 40 grams of magnesium carbonate. Next, we work with the magnesium sulfate. Same equation. I didn't put it down because you follow the same exact logic, including the seven waters with this. Um, and that will give you a total of 116.84 grams of magnesium sulfate. So we know we have 50 grams here and 116.84. So we solve for both of these how much we need to make our 40 grams, but I'm going to use magnesium sulfate in excess. So we went through this whole equation to try to figure it out, but I want to use it in excess because it'll guarantee the uh, reaction goes to completion. It will also speed it up a little bit. So I'm going to use an excess of of about 32 grams 33 grams and go with 150 grams here so if you look at this this is 150 grams and 50 grams rounding that down actually um, and you end up with a three to one ratio and you'll see this often when you're making magnesium carbonate people will recommend a three to one ratio because they're using excess magnesium sulfate at 150 grams and the sodium carb at 50 grams. So that's how that ends up happening. And we went through all the math to figure it out. I hope that helps a little bit. I probably need a board twice as big to go through the details of everything, including the mag sulfate, but hopefully this will make a difference. So now that we have the quantities, I want to dissolve both of them in water. So if you look up the um, solubilities at room temperature, sodium carb is 22 grams per 100 milliliters, and magnesium sulfate with the waters is 27 grams per 100 milliliters. So Figuring out, I have this many grams divided by the 22 of the sodium carb times 100 because you'll end up, if you just do this, you end up with 0.229. Well, that's liters. So if you multiply it by 100, you get milliliters. So that's 229 milliliters of water I'll need to dissolve the sodium carbonate in. And I'm going to increase that to 300 because sodium carb is difficult to dissolve sometimes. And again, with the extra water, it'll just dissolve faster without changing the rest of the experiment or the results. The same thing works for magnesium sulfate. So we have 150 grams we're going to be using excess divided by 27 because it's 27 grams per 100 milliliters will give you 0.555 but multiply it by 100 which gives you 555 milliliters and I'm going to up that to 600 milliliter, milliliters for the same reason I did this. So we have our quantities we're going to be using and we have the volume of water we're going to be using. Moving on to our methods, we have two beakers here, one with the sodium carb dissolved, the other one with the magnesium sulfate dissolved, and you just pour them into the same container, and immediately your magnesium carbonate will come out of solution. It is not soluble in water, so it stays out of solution, and the excess magnesium sulfate and will be producing some sodium sulfate. Those will stay in solution because they're both soluble in water, so the only thing that comes out of solution is the magnesium carb, which we can then filter and dry and have our product here finally. So without any further ado, let's go make our magnesium carbonate. 150 grams of magnesium sulfate heptahydrate pre-weighed. 50 grams of sodium carbonate pre-weighed. I have 600 milliliters of distilled water here. Turn on the magnetic stirrer and here's our 150 milligrams, I'm sorry, grams of magnesium sulfate. Done. The magnesium sulfate is completely dissolved. No surprise. So I'm going to turn this down here. And next is the sodium carbonate. I've got 300 milliliters of distilled water here. As we spoke about, turn on the magnetic stir. And I'm going to add the 50 grams of sodium carbonate. Done. Be back when it's dissolved. The sodium carbonate is dissolved, so I'm going to turn this down and move it over to where we're going to do the experiment. And in this rather simple experiment here, this is where the magic occurs. I'm going to pour the um, sodium carbonate into the magnesium sulfate, which will produce our magnesium carbonate. And you can see that come out of solution right away. 
as a milky white substance that's flying all over the place. So the extra magnesium sulfate and the extra sodium sulfate that was just produced will stay in solution. They're both very soluble in water. So when we filter this, they'll flow through and we'll be left with just the magnesium carbonate as we talked about earlier. Just gonna get this good mix, make sure it's mixed up good. And of course, I'm gonna filter this here and we'll dry out our product. And start filtering this in a one liter flask here. You can see the top of this, it's already started to sink. Obviously, this will take some time. I will be back. Well, as you can see, the filter paper was getting so clogged, I had a second flask here to uh, speed the whole thing up. So what I'm going to do now, as most of the water has dripped through, or water plus electrolytes, I'm going to take the uh, filter paper out of this and start the drying process by putting it on top of some paper toweling. Get that out of the way. And do the same thing here. All right, let those start to uh, soak in a bit. I'll probably change the paper toweling a couple times or maybe more um, and just keep going till it's dried. I made a simple mistake and did not wash either one of these before I started to dry it. So they're back where they were and I'm gonna go ahead now and wash these thoroughly to make sure any extra magnesium sulfate and the sodium sulfate we created get washed through. So this is gonna take a bit more time and yeah. Like usual, I'll be back when I am done. Okay, we're back at square one, and we just need to let these dry. After I washed both piles with distilled water really well, I let them dry a little bit and then put them both into this single container here. It's plastic, and if I just let this sit, because magnesium carbonate is hygroscopic, nothing will happen. Some of the water will dry, but it'll remain wet, of course. And I've also tried to dry this with some heat on filter paper before, and the filter paper and magnesium carbonate became one. And when it was completely dry, it got uh, very fragile. And as I tried to take the magnesium carbonate off the filter paper, paper came with it. It was impossible to separate. So what I need to do, and really the only way to do this, is put it in a glass container and heat it until it's dry. And that's what I'm going to do. This is a glass dish from inside a microwave, and it works really well. I'm finding out for things like this. So it's been on here drying this magnesium carbonate for at least four hours and it looks like it's really really well dried light as a feather there's a lot of water in here that evaporated and uh so i'm gonna finish scraping this off here i'm gonna grind it into a powder and then uh, we'll weigh it and see what our results are all right i'm gonna dump this into this shovel here that i made for just this reason Okay, our scale is on. Let's see how much we got here. There's a few tiny pieces there that have fallen off, but that's going to be negligible, negligible I expect. All right. We got 36.12 grams. Our goal was, uh, and our theoretical yield was 40 grams. Well, so let's do this real quickly. We'll take our 36.14 divided by 40 and times 100. So there you got a 90.35% yield. Not bad, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. So the main reason for making this, again, is part of a uh, mixture to make some colored smoke bombs. So I'll come back to that in a future video. One hundred and fifty point oh four. What?